you know, we're, none of us are worthy. And this, this is just proven that I'm still not worthy. And, you know, God was listening. I went back upstairs. They put a sit in him. And we went home five days later. Uh, he was doing good. We would sit around the family, at, at, at the table as a family, read the Bible and talk about what we read. We went through our house and took out anything that didn't have anything, you know, anything that could bring harm to us inside or could bring unwanted spirits in. That was the second time God had been good to me and I didn't deserve it. In June, William and I were baptized on Father's Day. What a great day that was. I had small bouts with kidney stones and had them blasted. I don't know if you've ever had lipotripsy, but it, I mean, it's an in-and-out surgery. You hurt in a few hours and you're ready to go. In the summer of 2014, after I'd gone through all this and God had given me everything I had asked for, I was backsliding. We had been to a few different churches. We never really found where we belonged. And I was tired of getting to know people and getting up and leaving and not going back. And I was done. I was finished. And if I say that, I'm done. I don't come back. Meanwhile, Bud, Bud never let me not go back. He is the reason that I came back to the Lord. Because he, kept, he was always in my ear. Um, we decided, we didn't go to church for a few weeks, and then we went, we wound up at Grace Chapel, a Pentecostal church, and believe me, I didn't want to be there, I didn't want to be in any church, but I definitely didn't want to be at that church, these people were nuts, <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, these people were out there, and they scared me. <laughs> they get up doing all that jumping and stuff, and I'm telling but I'm going home. Now, you can ride with me or ride with somebody else, but I'm out of here. These people are nuts. <laughs> he just, he'd just say, oh, honey, just wait. And I would listen. I would listen. It's a wonder, but I would listen. Um, I hadn't really felt good for a while, but I handle pain pretty well. And it's really hard for people to tell if I'm not well. So... We decided to go to Perry Stone for a Reformation weekend. If you don't know Perry Stone, he's the crazy Pentecostal. <laughs> but I done got used to these people jumping, hopping, and carrying on. So I, I didn't want to go, but I didn't want to disappoint Bud either. <laughs> so, you know, we had had discussions, and I told him, I'm not going. They're all crazy. But I did go. The Holy Spirit took over down there and th done things I'd never seen. Never seen. I was transformed once again. God has shown me once again. As kidney stones started to fall out of my body. Right there. Right there in Tennessee. And they even said, Perry Stone said, Your kidney stones are gone now. And they were. Even though I hadn't been true and faithful, God still loved me. When my faith came back, my healing was back. It was all about faith and obedience in Him. We all fail and come short, but He loves us anyway. I was on fire again. We came home that we came home from that Reformation, reformed and transformed. We got involved in Grace Chapel, but you remember I didn't want to be there because they nuts. <laughs> and that's where God wanted us to be. He told me this is where I need you to be. You know. In, I'm the arguer. I'm like, you know, they, they freak me out. He's like, this is this is it. So we take our children. Robert's, Robert's a grown man, and William was, I don't know, 15 or so. He wasn't driving yet. We take them to church with us. Well, they get up and start doing that stuff. After church, we go out for lunch, and my boy said, we ain't never going back there, Mama. <laughs> Broke my heart. Broke my heart. Because I just want it to be a family, and and we didn't even we we didn't even explain that when you go to a Pentecostal church they're different. Yeah, you know, and not to mention that there have been times we had talked against the tongues, and those boys remember what we say. 
Mm-hmm. So, we were sitting in the middle of hometown pizza, and I'm having a breakdown because my children won't go to church with me. And they said, Mama, we can't. You know, we can't, we can't have nothing to do with that. So, we started to pray. Bud said, let's pray. That's what we did. We prayed and prayed and prayed. Bud had been working on his calling that he ignored many years ago to be a minister. Grace Chapel helped him do that. I was helping women, and that's what I want to do. I, I want to help them. I want to talk to them. I want to share my life experience with them and see if it can help them along any way possible. Then wham, our pastor left. Broke our heart. I know you're not supposed to follow a man. This was the first pastor to take an interest in us. And he left. Down here spiral. The devil once again was in my ear. I told you you ain't worthy. Anybody ever had that problem? I told you you're not worthy. And you'll never be. And on and on. Your pastor left and here you are. But you still have me. (laughs) So the backsliding begun. I still went to church, but I didn't want to. We had no pastor. Everyone was at each other's throat. Then in February, the kidney pain came again. Um, My kidney was shutting down. I wasn't a candidate for transplant because my body makes these stones, and it would just damage a new kidney. The doctor said it would just be a waste of a kidney if if I took a kidney. The devil, meanwhile, is in my ear telling me, you know, I told you so, la la la. I was sinking fast. In April, I left my job of eight years because I was sick and a few other things had went on. This was a hard blow to me and my family financially. The devil's still in my ear. I went to the doctor after doctor. No one could help me. And the ones who could, my insurance refused to pay because I'd had too many kidney problems. I'd had too many kidney surgeries. I couldn't pay no longer. I was in constant pain and bleeding. Infection for months. I was on constant antibiotics trying to get rid of E. coli. For months and months I suffered. With the devil talking to me the whole time. See, I told you. He doesn't love you. In July I could feel my health going downhill. But I hit it pretty well. I prayed and prayed and my faith was wavering. I went to the doctor in August and she said, Deidre, This is kidney failure progression. I had lesions. I was in total meltdown. Yes, I was ready to give up. But I was worried about my boys. Bud. What would they do without me? I know they're grown. I know they can take care of themselves. But I'm their rock. And their rock's crumbling. I worried and worried. We... Bud had decided to have an old-fashioned prayer meeting at Grace Chapel. And anything Bud's involved in, I'm about this far from his back. That's the way we are. Usually if you see me, you see him. So, when it came time for that, I felt horrible. And I didn't want to go. But he said, please, just go. So I did. So, um... We were all praying, and our pastor said, Deidre, come on up here. Let's, let's pray for you. You know, the devil was like, oh, yeah, let's pray for her again. She's always up here. She's always sick. Always something. He was praying, as many of my church members were, and he stopped, and he said, Deidre, stop worrying about your boy. You're not going anywhere. And I, I, our, our new pastor is very good at discernment, and he's very good. And um, he hit the nail on the head. I was sick, yes. But I was mentally sick for my children. He said, Stop worrying about it and give it to God. So I did. My father in law, Vicki, was there that night. They could see I had given up. I was done. Mm-hmm. Me and Bobby have been around each other many years, and he's seen me at my worst. But he's always loved me. I still felt rough that Friday and Saturday. Yes, I went to church on Sunday. And again, my church gathered around me. The elders anointed me. They spoke in tongues. They prayed for healing. Meanwhile, at Bethel, they were having Vicky to stand in for me. While they all gathered and prayed for me. 
Now my sisters and brothers, that was a move of God. I went home still feeling bad. Monday morning, I was 100% better. No fever, no chills, no throwing up, no blood. The next few days, stones poured out of me like sand. There were no lumps of stones. This was gravel. Tracy told me, Deidre, you're going to have a few rough days, but it's over. It's done. I had a doctor appointment that Friday that I didn't really want to go to, but I did because Bud wouldn't shut up. So, <laughs> <laughs> he, he wouldn't shut up. So, I went and I had this test and I had that test and he said, you had surgery since I last seen you? I said, no, sir, I sure have not. He said, but those ten stones are like sand. And I said, yes, I know my God is mighty. He said, your kidney function is up 15%. And I screamed, thank you, Jesus. I said, I serve a mighty God, sir. He said, your blood shows calcium is way too high, way, still way too high. I said, my Lord and Savior will help that. Yeah. Old doctor, he took, 10, he took 12 tubes of blood that day. And he said, we're going to figure this out. <laughs> he, those, those blood, tubes of blood wasn't going to tell him what he wants to know. He had to talk to him for that. Mm -hmm. On Monday, he called. And he said, the only thing I can find is your parathyroid is not functioning normal. And that's caused these whole kidney problems the last 20 years. God had led me to a doctor to save my life. You see, all my stones all my life have been calcium stones. They're not smooth stones. They have horns, and they cut and shred their way out. God has taken them away from me, you see. It made me well. And now he's allowed the doctor to find out why. So we can cure this problem forever. Why? Because God loves us. Sinners, backsliders, ye of little faith. He loves us all. Not, not because he has to. Not because of what we do for him. Because what I do for him is not a handful of day. What he does for me is eternity. Psalms 32. I've said this many times. Oh, my Lord, I cried out to you and you healed me. And he did. Cry out to praise and glorify him. Because that's what I do. I do not hide my faith from anyone. I do not cut it. I do not. I'm always 100% strong. If I'm talking to you about Jesus, whether you, you know, I know people, just like they used to call my granddaddy a Bible thumper. I'm a Bible thumper and I'm proud. Me too. Isaiah 53. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our inequities. And the punishment that brought us peace up was on him. But by his wounds we are healed. We are all like sheep and have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord has claim on him the inequity in all of us. So if you think you're not worthy, remember this story. Because I could have went way back way back so when I, I was not worthy even more worthy than I am not worthy today you know if you if you think you're not worthy you're right you're not worthy but he loves you anyway the only way to heaven is to accept Jesus as your savior the only way it doesn't matter from here to here my daughter-in-law, or my future daughter-in-law, just gave her life to the Lord two weeks ago. Do you know why she gave her life to the Lord? 
Because God has transformed my family. Not into perfect people. We already loved each other. But in our in the way we treat people, she sees the difference. And she wants to be part of that. She wants to be in his love. It's nothing about us. It's all about glorifying him. And and she stepped up and just accepted Jesus. And yes, she's a Catholic. Her her whole family's a Catholic and she's one against her family. Not because we hound it. Not because we begged. Not because we always said, Kayla, 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 Kayla. But because Jesus came into her heart. She's been with us for six years. She's seen my struggle. She's seen the struggle with Bud. And she wants to be part of that. When we go to heaven, she wants to go with us. She, she wants to be there with us. As we want everybody to be with us. Don't let the devil in your ear. Because he will take over if you let him. Your faith has to be strong. Squash him beneath your feet. Because he has no place in your life. He has no place. Pray. My prayer life is so important to me. Praise him always. Because everything you do is for his honor and glory. It has nothing to do with you. I don't bring people to the Lord. He brings people to the Lord. Amen. We, we have nothing to do with it. And I'm going to leave you with this. Second Chronicles 7, 14. This was given to my husband. A few, it's been several months ago. For our church. And I want to share it with you. If my people. Who are called by my name. Will humble themselves and pray. And seek my face. And turn from their wicked ways. And I will hear from heaven. And I will forgive their sins. And I will heal their land. Our land needs healing. We all need to turn back to God. Second Chronicles 7. Tells us that. Thank you all. Praise God.